welcome back everyone so as you can see inside the VS code I have an empty folder and I need to make a new react app so I just open the terminal and write npx create react app and write this dot because I want to initialize my project inside this empty folder now as you can see our project is generated and I need to delete some of the files that I do need now let's remove everything inside the app.js and instead I'm gonna write hello world inside the index.css I delete all the code and instead I target every element and write margin 0, padding 0 and box sizing to border box now let's delete this after CSS and logo because we don't need them and inside this index.js I delete this extra code that I don't need now our project is ready let's install Tailwind CSS so I just open the browser and write here Tailwind CSS for react.js you can open this link as you can see the first code is to show you how you can initialize the react app and the second one is to install the Tailwind.css so I just copy this one and inside the terminal I just paste it and install okay now let's check it inside the package.json you can see that we have a tailwind.css in our package.json and let's run this other code to initialize a package for tailwind CSS so I just copy this and paste it over here you can see we have a tailwind.config.js so this file is you can write your custom code inside here for example you want to add your custom font size colors or spacing sizes font families you can write them manually in here okay so the first thing that we need to add is the content we need to copy this code and paste it inside our content now there is another code that we need to put that inside our CSS file so I just copy them and open the index.css and paste them at the top of every code I have now let's run the react app so I just write npm start you can see our hello world is printed over here now to check the tailwind.css let's come back to the app.js and write a class name over here and I just give it a text color of read with the 600 of opacity you can see that the color is changed it means that the Tailwind CSS is successfully installed okay as I said you can add your custom code manually inside this config now I'm gonna show you what type of code you can write in here I just open the extend object and in here I write colors and inside the color I need to give a color for my to do box I just write to do and write this color code over here and for the background color I write this color code and down here I need to have some spacing so wherever I need this spacing I just write them manually so I just write two rims and three rims and I need to have some font sizes that I'm gonna write them manually over here I just write two two rims so these are the codes that you can write manually inside the tailwind.config you can add other codes like font family and maybe some other things that the config lets you write in okay now let's test one of them I just go back to the app.js and I'm gonna change the font size of this text I just write 2 you can see that the font size is changed okay okay now let's change the background color of our application so I just go back to the index.css and inside here I target the body in the regular CSS we need to write background color but in Tailwind CSS instead I just write add apply and the background color is going to be this this body BG okay 
now if I open the browser okay we have an error over here let's figure it out whenever you want to change something inside the config you need to rerun the application so I just rerun the react app I found out that I didn't include this color code over here now you can see we have this dark background okay now let's make our components so I just make a new folder and call that component and inside that I need to have a file called todos.js I just run the react snippets and now I just get rid of this h1 and instead I just import my todos file so in the class name we need to give it a text white because the background color is dark and also I need to give it a padding of 4 so padding Y means from top and bottom you can see that it has a space from the top. Now let's open the to do's file. Inside it, I just write an h1 and tell when to do list. So I just give this div a class name. Padding top three rims. If you remember, we give a we give three rim manually in, inside the config file and a width of 90%. Now to bring it in the middle, I just gave it an MX of auto. So MX auto means margin zero auto in regular CSS. You can see that it is in the middle. Okay, now let's style our title. So I just write a class name inside that one and give it a text of two, which means the font size of two and the font width of medium. So the text center means text align center. You can see that our text is ready in the middle. And I write this capitalized to make the title to be capitalized. Now let's install a few dependencies that we need in this project. So the first library is going to be our emoji library. So I just open the browser and search for emoji mod. Click this link. You can see it has a code for React app. Just copy this code and inside the terminal open a new page. And we need to first install the React icons for our icons, the moment for the date, and also paste this code. So I just delete this npm install and then this save dependency. Now just click enter. Now if I open this packet.json, you can see all my files have been installed. Okay, now let's start building this project. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a form to submit our to-do list. So first of all, I need to make a comment here. And down here, I write a div. Inside this div, I write a form and get rid of this action. Inside the form, I need to have another div. And inside this div, I will have a text area. I just get rid of this name and ID and change the rows to 2. Then I will have an icon for my emoji. So I just write span. And to get the icon, I just go back to the React icons. So I just search for React icons. And inside the React icons website, I look for emoji. I just pick this one. And import it inside my component. Now I just write it inside the span tag. As you can see in the browser, we have a text area and an emoji icon. Okay, now let's implement the button. So down the div, I write button with the text of add. And again, we need to have an icon. So I just go back to the React icon and look for plus icon. Now import it inside my component and paste it over here inside the button. Okay, now let's start styling this form. So the first one is going to be form. So I just write class name inside the form tag and we need to divide them into two parts. So I just write flex 
item start it means that align items select start and the gap is going to be 2 padding top is going to be 2 rim now you can see that the button and text area is in two sides but the div we need to give a class name a width of full so that width full means a width of 100 percent we need to display flex again items and it means align items flex and padding to and for the text area we need to give a class name with the width full background color of transparent and the outline is noun and resize to none it means that we don't want this text area to be resizing and the text size i want it to be small okay now you can see that the background color is gone okay so we are gonna give a background color to the parent element of our text area and inside this deep class name i just write bg up to do you can see that we have a background color but it is very large that is because Helven CSS styling from mobile version first and then it will style the bigger size. First of all, I'm going to give it a border radius to the parent div of the text area. So the round it, I want it to be small and position related. You can see it get a little border radius. Okay, now let's give it a plus holder. Write your text. Okay, so inside this class, for small sizes that start from 600, the width I want it to be 70%. For the medium devices, I want to give it a width of 60%. And for large devices, I want to give it a width of 40%. Now you can see it has a short width in bigger screen. And if I open the end spec, and you can see it has a large width inside the mobile version. Okay. Now let's implement our emoji. Okay, now first of all, let's give a little styling to this icon. So I just go back to the component and write a class name in the span tag. I write a cursor pointer. And for the hover, I give it a text of slate 300 opacity. Okay, now let's style our button. So for the button, I just give it a flex item center and make it capitalized. I'm gonna give it a gap of two and the background color of yellow 200 and the text color is going to be black. So padding Y is going to be 1.5 and padding X is three and give it a small border radius. In the hover, I give it a background yellow of 100 and you can see that the button is ready, okay. Now let's implement our emoji. So I go to the emoji website and just copy this code from here and paste it inside my to-do list. You can see we have a data and picker. So picker is the component and data is the data that come from the emoji. So down here I just write a div and write this picker component. So inside it we can set up some settings. So the first one, I want to pass this data into it. And if I go to the browser, you can see that the emoji is already showing up. So now let's style this div. I'm gonna give it a class name of absolute, means position absolute. For the top, I gave it 100%. And the right, I gave it two. Now you can see that the emoji is down here. That is because we need to move our div inside this div that has position relative. Now you can see that the icons are in the right place. Okay, as you can see inside the emoji website, it has bunch of settings that you can do on your own. So the setting that I am going to do is going to be emoji size, the first one. So it is by default 24. So I just come back and write it inside this component and give it a size of 20. You can see the size of emoji is decreased and I'm going to change the size of this emoji button to 28. Okay, so this component has a function to print the emoji. I just write it here and for now I just wanna console like it. Okay, if I open the console, 
and click one of the emojis, you can see that the emoji is printed in the console. Okay. So now I just get rid of the frequently used because I don't need them. I just come down and write max frequent row is equal to zero. Okay, now let's hide this emoji and then show this emoji with the help of this emoji icon. So I just go back and we need to have a user state hook. I'm gonna name that show emoji and set show emoji it will be and it will be false by default. And down here I need to wrap this with a curly braces and write if the show emoji is true. I want to show this component. Now you can see that the emoji is gone. Okay, now let's show this component with the help of this icon. I just go back and write an on click on this span tag an arrow function and set show emoji to this clination mark and show emoji. It means that it will toggle between true and false. Now if I click this emoji icon you can see that the emoji is showing and if I click it back it will be disappeared. Okay now let's print this emoji inside the text area. So first of all we need to write a user set hook for our text area and change the value of this text area and give it a non change you can see we can write something in the text area and instead of this console log i need to write a new function and i'm gonna call that add emoji up here i write that function and inside that function we need to write the following code so const sim is equal to so that function will pass the emoji using event so we receive this event in here and now write e that unified that is split by this underscore so it means that we are getting the unified core of this emoji now if i console like the same and if i click one of this emoji you can see that we got a unified text okay now what i need to do i need to make an empty array over here and then we need to map through each and every sim get the element and push that element inside this empty array but we need to push the 0x plus element now to get this emoji i just write a new variable and write emoji and string dot form code point and get all the code array and finally what I need to do is just write set text and the value I want to push the text which is the initial value of the text area plus emoji. Okay now I can write something in the text area and if I click on emoji you can see that I am able to write the emoji. Alright guys that's it for this video. So in the next video we will implement the functionality of adding, deleting and updating a to-do list. See you in the next video.